the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a great guest for you today. Our guest is Andrea Newburn. Andrea works as the COO of Get Rich Education. Andrea also serves as a real estate agent for investors in the St. Simons Island area and Brunswick, Georgia markets. She loves helping people find financial freedom through real estate investing. Welcome to the show, Andrea. How are you? Hey, Tim. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you having me on today. Yeah, fantastic. So, so let's just start from the beginning. I think that's always the best place to start. Um, you know, how did you get to this point? Where did you start, and and where are you going moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I graduated college when the market crashed in '08, and Good um, Good yes, it was wonderful. And I I could not find a job at all. So, I ended up working for ten dollars an hour processing foreclosures for a law firm at the time. Um, and it, I was making more money in college bartending than doing well, that, but <laughs> that's a feel good job too, right? Right. In I tell 2008, you, 2009, feeling pretty good. Yeah, I know it was rough. Yeah. It was rough for everybody, but I right. uh, did that for a couple of years and moved up at that company very quickly, moved off to Europe, got my MBA there oh. while still working for my company here in the U S and then, um, came back, got a job in corporate America. And I was in corporate America for a total of about 15 years. Um, about halfway through doing that, I said, you know, there's got to be a better way for me to make money than this. You know, I was training a lot of time for, for money and I didn't want to do that forever. So I said, how's the best way for me to be able to make money the fastest and the safest. Uh, and that ended up being through real estate. So I started buying just as many properties as I could over a period of five, six years. After a little less than four years, I replaced my uh, W2 income, which I was in management consulting. So it was, it was not a small income at the time at all. Right. Um, and then kind of just quit work and eventually got connected with Keith Weinhold, who's the CEO of Get Rich Education, and came on board with him to help run his operations. Um, so that's in a very high level how I got here. Right. Fantastic. So uh, you you are still in production. Am I correct? That is correct. Yes. So um, as far as real estate goes, I not only invest myself, I also help investors in the St. Simons and Market area, and I work only with uh, real estate investors in the area. Okay. So let's talk about that, talk, sure. uh, you know, working with real estate investors. First and foremost, tell me about the difference between working with real estate investors and working with the retail market. Um, you know, is, is that, is it a leap? I mean, because there are a lot of retail, uh, a, a lot of retail agents that feel like, hey, I want to get into that or I want to move to that market. Is that as big a leap as moving from corporate America and becoming a real entrepreneur as a as a, a real estate broker? Or is it just a really smooth transition? Yeah, it's a little interesting. It's a great question. Um, I personally prefer working with investors. I feel like coming from a, a corporate America background where I was in an analytics type position, mm -hmm. uh, investors are a lot more analytical and less emotional to work with. Um, and so kind of yeah. making that, <laughs> yeah, it's an understatement, I'll take right? That every day. <laughs> exactly. Um, but they're, they're just a lot easier to work with. I do not have obviously as large of a if I were doing your traditional buy and sell. Um, but I do have people that come back and buy eight, nine, 10, 12 properties, you know, within a year or two. Wow. So there's a lot of volume there. Yeah. So, so, so volume is the key and mm -hmm. making that transition. Is that just a marketing, um, you know, is, is, is it just the difference is the way you market yourself or does that not change? It's just a different group of people. Yeah. That's, that's another good question. You know, the crazy thing is I don't market at all. Okay. I don't, I do networking occasionally. I'm right. on podcasts. Um, I usually get connected through referrals only at this point. And so wow. I haven't had to do much marketing to, to be able to kind of build up my client base, which is nice. Wow. That's really nice. I would, yeah. I would say 90% of uh, folks in the industry right now would say, wow, how does she do that? You know? Yeah. So, so, so tell me about the properties uh, that you're looking for uh, or, or, or the investors you're looking for either side of the coin, you know, what, mm -hmm. what is your, what is your demographic and, you know, 
who are you looking for and what type of properties are you looking for? That's the easiest way to say it. Yeah, there you go. So um, we're in a coastal market, which uh, people come for vacationing, right? So you can right. look for vacation rentals. You can look for non-vacation rentals of people just visiting the area for work or things like that. I typically target uh, newer investors, people that you know have less than 10 properties on average. Um, I help kind of educate them on how to invest and what to look for. So a large part of the service I offer is not just getting them the property, it's educating them on how to evaluate and analyze the properties. And most of them are going for single families. We do have a few investors that look at multifamilies in the area. Um, we do kind of a mix. We have some clients that come in and they want to do like short-term rentals. Um, they want us to help furnish them and, you know, help get them set up and manage them. We have some that want long-term buy and holds. So it kind of just depends on the client. But I would say most of my clients are less than 10 properties when they start with me. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. so when, so you only work in your area and that's on the investing side as well, right? That is correct. Yep. Okay. And do you train also? I mean, is there a coaching element to this or? There is. It's not like a formal, you know, here's my online coaching platform for you to go to. It's more kind of one-on-one -on -one consulting and making okay. sure that we're developing a plan that works for the individual needs of the investors. Mm -hmm. And so not formalized, but we do it for everybody. Got you. Got you. So tell me where, you know, we know where you're at right now. We know how you got there. Let's talk about the future, right? Yes. And this is always the fun part because- People are like, oh, gosh, you know, it's unlimited, you know, unlimited potential. And uh, but but we in the industry know, it, you know, that's not how we should be thinking. We have to be very granular about it, very forward thinking. So what is your plan? Um, you, you know, tell me about where the company is going and, and how you plan to get there. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things that I think are important to mention, I am not your typical full-time real estate investor. Right. I have a lot of different things. My hands are in a lot of different buckets. So not only do I work for Get Rich Education, yeah. yes, I do a lot of things. <laughs> um, I spend part of my year in Michigan as well. So I live okay. in Georgia part-time, Michigan part-time. And in Michigan here, we bought a crime scene cleanup company. Oh, okay. And I know people are like, what does that matter as far as real estate goes? But it does. <laughs> um, we, this one of the reasons. This podcast is about to go dark. <laughs> it, it is, but it, it's an interesting topic because I think it helps yeah. people think of ways to make additional income to lead into real estate. Okay. So this crime scene cleanup company that we uh, opened and we started earlier this year, we often get real estate deals that are brought to us off market. And so I think that's important because that is opening up a lot of deal flow for investors that I currently have, as well as new investors that are interested in different markets besides just the beach, right? right. Um, so we're kind of looking at expanding our real estate portfolio out here to Michigan through that. Okay. Um, and then we're also going to keep expanding on uh, the coast of Georgia and a little bit further up north as well. So um, I still plan on still targeting investors only. I really prefer working with them. Right. Uh, but I want to be able to open up to other markets and get deals that are off market so they're not paying top dollar and they still have a little bit of meat on the bone at the right. end of the day. So let's talk about top dollar. Uh, you know, yeah. that's uh, that's a phrase that we use a lot. You know, I mean, that's just because of the market that we're in right now. Mm. How are how are you and your investors finding, as you say, you know, deals with meat, meat on the bone and what's your parameters for that? Yeah. So one of the things I really like to look at is, is there a house that has sat on the market for a really long time? And okay. there still are. It doesn't happen very often anymore, as we all know. But a lot of people want a house that's a little bit nicer and they don't want to take on like a full gut rehab in the area that I service. And so we often target those that have been sitting on the market a while and we just continue submitting offers when we know that they're not getting any until they finally will just agree and say, I need to get this off of my hands. I need to, I need to go. Yeah. And so that's one of the things we do. We also do a lot of direct mail marketing. Um, mm -hmm. And I even partner with uh, other people that do marketing for me also um, that reach out to sellers and go to them directly. And so a lot of the deals we're getting now are off market. They're not on the MLS, but we still have some on the MLS too. Got you. Got you. Is that, um, is there a lot of um, working with a probate or anything like that? You know, you look for deals in that. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of people that do that in their areas. Is that yeah, something we, that you also do? We do have some probate lists that we target for direct mail marketing. Um, I wouldn't say it's a large percentage of the deals that we currently get, but some do come through every now and then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you were talking about what you do in Georgia. Uh-huh. And then, and, and, and these are things that just pique my interest as I'm talking to you. So I'm thinking, okay, as you know, I'm listening to this and I go, this is kind of fascinating, you know, half is, you know, half the year in Georgia, half the year or whatever your time frame is, mm -hmm. it may not be half the year. I'm not sure winters, I'm in South 
Southeast Florida. So I'm not sure I could handle those winters anymore. <laughs> Uh, I, I spent many up there in, in, in the Midwest. Um, so are you are you basically doing the same thing? Just just is it almost like franchising just to different areas for you in, in the in your markets in those two Correct. Markets? That that's okay. absolutely correct. Yeah, we're basically replicating the model we have done in Georgia. We're gonna implement that in Michigan um, and then kind of target the same base here. Okay. So what are your forecasts right now? Um and, and tell me about the model of types of properties. I mean, is it dependent only on the investor? Like if I come to you and I say, I want to be a real estate investor. I have this much. What can you, you know, how, how do I do this? Or is it like, okay, uh, we're going to use a lot of different things, you know, um, creative financing, you know, we're going to use mortgages. We're going to use this, this, this. If I come to you and say, here's my, here's my net net dollar amount. How do you determine how to guide them? into maybe the, let's say I'm a, I'm, I'm a novice uh -huh. it's my first property and I'm like okay I trust you <laughs> so, yeah so, yeah great question so a lot of the times when it's somebody who's brand spanking new to real estate investing I try to help them target something that's lower risk and so mm -hmm. I don't want them to to put the, the few dollars that they usually have into something that's going to be higher risk or okay. that could not cash flow once the market changes because it's already changing a little bit right? Right. right so we try to target lower dollar properties but properties that still have a great cash flow I personally really like short-term rentals for certain investors that are newer. Okay. Uh, and I know a lot of people be like, wait, 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 short-term rentals are riskier. Yes, they are. But the way we set these up is they're more of mid-term rentals for these investors. And okay. they house nurse, nurses that are traveling, doctors that are traveling, legal professionals, things like okay. that. And so there is some risk there, of course, if the market changes and people quit traveling for work, but you're not targeting only vacation investors. And so there's a much bigger pool out there for them to, to get for rentals. Got you. Can you quantify that a little bit? Like what, sure. what's a short term, what's a midterm and what's a long term? And yeah. also, also, are you are you just retail properties or, or are we looking at corporate properties as well? Um, you know, business rentals, things like that. Yeah, great question. So the way I look at it, and it depends on the market typically, but anything less than 30 days, we do consider that a short-term rental. Okay. Um, you're not going to have, in most states, states are different, but you're not going to have the same type of eviction and tenancy requirements if they're less than 30 days. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, you start hitting the 30 days and more, you're looking at more of midterm rentals. I would typically say if you're more than six months, that's going to be a long-term rental, whether it's furnished or unfurnished. Um we don't, in the area we're in, there's not a big, a lot of big corporations or big companies that are in that area. Okay. So we don't target corporate housing specifically, but we do target nurses because there's a lot of nurses that are traveling to the area. You get a lot of snowbirds that have moved down for the Midwest and the Northeast and they need medical care. So we have like a big medical center there that, that we like to rent to. Oh, fantastic. So is there, I'll, I'll bring up marketing again, because that my forte has been working with the real estate environment in their marketing endeavors. So mm -hmm. do you market to the specific entities that the nurses um, transfer into or is it, you tell me. Yeah, no, actually we literally just post on Furnish Finder and oh, Furnish okay. Finder pushes out to all different nice. types of sites that target nurses specifically. And so I think there's maybe 30 or 40 sites on there that they publish these listings to. Um, Furnish Finder is cheap. It's $99 a year and you book oh. directly with the nurse. You don't have to go through Airbnb or VRBO right. or anything like that. So it cuts down on the fees and the cost. Yeah. Do you create your own contracts? Through we that? do. I mean, you we do, we do have our own thing. contracts through that. Yep. Yeah, that's a huge savings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, give give me that that bit of advice before I would come to you or or anything like. Give me that bit of advice on expectation. Expectation is just such a huge part of this. You know, yeah. having talked to 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 so many folks in the industry, and if that expectation isn't set right you're setting yourself up for issues down the road. I'm probably taking words out of your mouth, but <laughs> tell me about the expectation you like to set for your investor. Yeah, I think first and foremost, one of the things I often have to do is kind of put the brakes on people when they come to me because they're often ready to go right now, right this second. And I am never, ever going to pair somebody with a bad deal just to get mm -hmm. a sell. Um, it's much right. more important for me for them to have cash flow and for them right. to come back for their second, third, fourth purchase. And if they mess right. up on the first one, they're not going to do it. Right. So I often have to tell them, hey, it's going to be, you have to be patient. We're in a weird market right now. It may be tomorrow when I find you something. It may be a month and a half, two months from now. So right. just 
be ready, you know, ask questions. We'll start trying to kind of figure out the financials of it as we go, but I'm not going to let you buy something tomorrow just because you're ready to pull, you know, to go on yeah. the accelerator. Right. So, you know, do your due diligence, take your time, you know, understand exactly what you're getting into. Exactly. What is, what, what is their expectation walking in or mo most of your investors? Uh, hey, I want income. You know, here, here's the bottom line. I just, you know, here's X, once again, here's X amount of dollars. Yeah. I expect X amount of dollars in return because I need to supplement my income or, or are they like, Hey, I want something. Uh, and I know everybody's different. Or are they like here lump sum? I want at least in five years, I want to retire or ten, whatever the parameter is. And I just need it to be worth this. I mean, is it a little bit of both? Is it more one or the other? It's all over the place. So uh -huh. I'll have investors that are like, I want to retire from my six figure job in a year. Those are usually the ones that have more money. They come, right. they're ready. They've got several hundred thousand that they're ready to invest. And right. I can usually get them there in like a year or two if they're, you know, if they have the capital and they're ready to go. I have others that it literally takes them a year or two to make their first purchase. And so it is hand holding, oh, wow. it is hand holding. It's getting them to get out of that quote unquote analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis right. Yeah. So a lot, it's just all over. We have some that are like, Hey, I want my one property right now. And then we'll see how it does for six months. And I'll come back for the second. Yeah. Yeah, real quick, not not to draw that out, but you know what is what is that process when you have that person that that is you know paralysis by analysis? Uh, what is the process to getting them to take your process to getting them to take that next step to or or to sign on the dotted line? Um, yeah. Because I I know lots of folks that have have that issue. Um, most agents and or investors uh, don't have that problem. Uh, because they yeah. have that button inside of them that tells them it's time to move, it's time to go. Uh, but I think with such a transfer of wealth going on right now, you got a lot of folks that aren't familiar yeah. with the processes. Um, you know, how does that lay out for you? Uh, such a good question. So one of the things I've had to do with some of the investors that are kind of dragging their feet is, number one, I see that they are literally losing money by not making a decision and not buying real estate sooner. So we've seen a lot of appreciation. Right, right. If some of them would have purchased a year ago, year and a half ago, they'd have significant equity, plus they would have had the cash flow, plus they would have had the tax benefits right. and the inflation hedging right now too, right? Because when you're getting a mortgage, you're literally locking in at that inflation rate at that time, even if inflation increases because you're using someone else's dollars. Sure. So what I found that's worked is to say, hey, look, here's this house. Had you bought this house a year ago, here's what would have happened with this. And here's what's probably not going to happen because you've waited. We're in a different market now. Mm -hmm. Here's what could happen if you purchase this house today. And if you don't, here's where you're going to lose money over the next year or two. So it's really showing them more of the case studies of what I have been able to do for other investors or myself if it's my, if it's my property and showing them kind of the benefits of moving now and not waiting too long. That seems to often kind of push them across the you know the line if they can actually see the benefits and see a real case study. Yeah. It's almost like, why are you here if we're not going to pull yeah. this trigger, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like part of my job is psychology as well. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, of course, <laughs> there, I mean, there's a bit of psychology in it. And, and, and to be fair to everybody who's listening uh, or watching, um, it, it, it's it's a game, but it's a it's a it's it's a fair game. I mean, yeah. it is what it is. It's it's you know, there's there's chess pieces that have to move that are out of our control. Right. I mean, yep. just markets in general, interest rates, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then there are the things that are in our control, which is, you know, how much, how many, how many things can we look at and how, how do we quantify things and putting plans in place. So, and it sounds yes. like you've really got good control on that. So how, how would someone reach you? You know, what, what, um, how would they get in touch with you if they were looking to use your services? Yeah, great question. So a couple of things I want to mention here at the beginning yeah. of this conversation, you mentioned that I run operations for Get Rich Education. Right. Um, I really recommend anybody that's interested in real estate investing to check out that okay. platform. Um, we're one of the top real estate investing podcasts. But what I think is important to mention is that we also have a ton of inventory. We partner with turnkey companies across the entire U.S. So if someone did want to purchase or find out more, you can go out to getricheducation.com forward slash course, C-O-U-R-S-E. Um, I'm actually out there as well. So if you go to getricheducation.com, you can find all of my contact information. That'd be the best place to get in touch with me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, this has been enriching. Um, you know, I love to hear stories like yours. It sounds like you've got a great plan for people. I'm going to go ahead and give you the last word. You know, anything else uh, in imparting some wisdom on our listeners? 
Yeah, the only thing I would say is if you're an agent and you're not an investor, it's really important to consider doing both because at some point you're going to want to stop working. And if you don't have a big team or you don't have people under you, your income is going to dry up. But if you own rental properties, you've got passive income. So I think it's important for agents to understand that and start investing themselves. Andrea, great advice. I love hearing it and, you know, taking that uh, entrepreneur like you, changing the hats over and over again. I think yeah. that's that's a great way to go. Great having you here. Look forward to talking to you again. And you have a great rest of the week. Thank you, Tammy, as well. All right.